It's six little words from an employer that can set fear into motion. Can I offer you some feedback? Well, did you know that there's an entire podcast just for giving and receiving feedback? On today's episode of Evergreen Spotlight, we get to speak with Sarah Esmile Beggy Bartlett, a consultant and coach in leadership development. We'll find some of her top tips when it comes to feedback. Let's dive in. Welcome to the conversation, Sara. I'm so excited to be here. Yay, we're so excited <laughs> to have you. Okay, so I want to know, what do you hear when you hear the phrase, can I offer you some feedback? I think like a majority of the people I talk to, I have the gut sing, right? The yeah. immediate like, oh no, <laughs> right, <laughs> what right. happened? What do I do? And that's part of the reason why I picked it as the title of the podcast. Yes. Because so many people have a really either emotional or physical response when they hear the question. And like in your research, like what made you decide to really go for an entire show about this? I mean, did you really come across that many people in, in, in your life that had that problem of dealing with or receiving or giving feedback? In your experience, like how did that come across your path? Yeah, so I do a mix of consulting and coaching and training. And one of the recurring themes that comes up is a lot of people are uncomfortable saying the thing, whatever the thing is, right? I don't like how you do this, or this isn't working for our group, or I wish we could do X, Y, Z better. And so that really comes down to giving feedback in the end, whether we're framing it in communication or we're framing it in conflict management. It's about telling the other person, mm -hmm. and sure, I can do a two-hour session on how to give better feedback, but at the core of it, why are you uncomfortable giving feedback? Or why am I uncomfortable mm. giving feedback? And I think that taking the time to have conversations with folks really wanted to have real people talking. On the podcast, we take the time to be able to say, just what does it feel like for you? What are your positives? What are your negatives? What do you wish people could do better? Because I'm hoping that the average listener can hear oh, that's just like me. And yeah. if they can do it, I can try it too. Yeah. So trying to make it a little bit relatable and a little less intense to just share what you wanna share with other people. And I think it's great because you're equipping your listeners with how to kind of go forward and mention like, hey, I don't like this. Or mm -hmm. if I do hear some feedback that I don't necessarily agree with or it sits uncomfortably with me, like yeah. why, you know? Do you consider feedback positive or negative? I think it's all about delivery. Right. Okay. I mean, I think that I can hear a compliment, and if I know that a negative comment is happening right after, I can't even hear the compliment. Or if I know that this person has my best interests at heart, yeah. I'm going to listen deeply. Or if they've taken the time to craft it well, or if they've been really intentional with our relationship prior, mm. then I know that this is going to be better than just some random person or a person I don't trust or I don't respect giving me their unsolicited critique, right? right? And feedback is all of those things, right? Whether it's from a well-intentioned person who has no relationship with me or someone I do have a deep relationship who wants to be honest with me. So I think in a way, is it hard to hear? Yeah. It's nice to hear nice things. I don't think anyone doesn't like to hear nice things. It's just, do we hear it and do we listen to it? Right. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily positive or negative. Mm -hmm. It's all about the delivery, which most of the time doesn't go the way people want. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times people don't take the time to think about how do I want to deliver this? What's the message I want to share? Is this even worth delivering? Meaning, can this person even change the thing that I don't like that they're doing or the impact that they're having. So right. it, it's tricky. I'm not sure if it's one or the other. It's uh, It depends, which is totally a consultant answer, but it really does depend on yeah. a lot of variables. Yeah. Sarah, with that, you know, is there a script or a template that maybe we can follow of how to begin giving feedback and how to end it and what to put in the middle so that it is really well received? There's definitely some frameworks that you can follow for the actual delivery of the feedback, yeah. but I want to rewind before we even get to the conversation, okay. right? As you're prepping for, should I even give the feedback, right? That's even before you're in the conversation with the person. Um, I, throughout the podcast, we've had a lot of different guests talk about, is this helpful? Is it kind? Is it important? Right? Is this what I want to share with them? Is this what I want them to take out of it? That's all before stuff. Before stuff, before I even get to the conversation. Now, if I've taken the time to clearly think about the purpose of the conversation, why I want to have it with this person, what's the intent or the impact that I'm looking for in the end, okay, 
fine, you've arrived to the actual conversation. I'd ask you to think about, okay, what's my relationship with this person? Do I know anything about the best time of day to do it or the best mm -hmm. setting to do it in? Do I know how do they prefer to receive feedback? So I'm someone, I love to get it in written form first and then a meeting the next day. Now, that's ideal, that's like best wow. case scenario, but that can always be the case. I've gotten feedback live in the moment, but if you're gonna get, deliver something that is gonna be intense mm -hmm. and we really need to talk about it, mm -hmm. I need a couple hours <laughs> to think about it, to process it, and then to be ready to have the conversation about what it's gonna be like next. Like that. But that's a before thing, right? That person and I have already talked about how do I prefer to receive it. Again, that's all context setting. When you're actually in the conversation, I think it's helpful to think about, all right, if I'm gonna share with this person, let's say for example, the way they run their meetings, I find to be ineffective. Hmm. Let's pretend that's the feedback. Yeah. I need to think of an example when that recently happened, right? I need to set the stage, think of the situation, and I need to talk about, hey, I've observed that when we've been in meetings, I'm struggling with following the flow, right? And I'm wondering, is anyone else experiencing that? Now, that's feedback, but it doesn't sound quite like feedback. I'm not coming out and saying, Julie, you run an ineffective meeting. Yeah. Because that's a judgment, right? Mm -hmm. Whether or not you agree, I don't think you're waking up like, how can I make an ineffective meeting? Sure. I'm stating my observation, right, of what's going on, how I'm being impacted by it, and I'm asking the question, are you noticing that too? Is anyone else noticing that? It's still feedback, but it doesn't sound like feedback in that same way. And then it's an open dialogue. I love having the conversation, right? It's, what do you think? Right? Again, I know you're not intending to have the meetings run that way. Let's talk about how we can make this better. I want to be able to follow the flow. I want to be able to get all of our action items. I want us to be able to use that time productively. And let's talk about it. I love when it can be a conversation. I love can it be an opportunity for us to workshop or brainstorm. Again, it's not kind of classic feedback where I just state how it is and then you have to take it. Right. I want it to be a dialogue. Mm. Then I think it's time not only for introspection, right? Did that actually go the way I wanted it to go, <laughs> right? We can rehearse it, we can practice, but then there's actually doing it, right. Right? right? Did I deliver the feedback the way I wanted? Did they react the way I expected? What did I want to say that I didn't say? And what got in the way of doing that? Then you can actually follow up that person, right? So again, we came up with a bunch of ideas on how to improve the meeting. Yeah. But then what? Does the next meeting actually change, right? It's one thing to have the conversation. It's another thing to actually implement the improvement. Yeah. And so the next time we have the meeting, we need to be ready <laughs> ahead of time. Okay, here's what I'm going to do different. Here's what you're going to do different. Because I wanted to actually have an impact, not just to have the conversation, just to have it. So I know you asked for a simple formula, and I know that a lot of folks just wish it was, okay, plug in A, this. plug in yes. B, yeah. and then always I'll get yeah. C. It takes a lot more effort yeah. than that, which I get it. That's hard. And some people just don't want to do that or don't see the value in or, or may not want to invest the time and energy mm -hmm. in it. So I think it's a whole big shebang yeah. <laughs> that you're trying to go for and yeah. really think about what am I trying to improve and can this person help me do that? What if nothing changes? Mm, that's a great question. So I'd be wondering, is it not changing because of me, because of the situation, because of that other party? Were we not clear on it? Or is this actually the issue, right? So again, going picking on the meeting, being effective. Is our ineffective meeting flow because maybe we don't want to work on this project and neither of us has actually talked about it? Mm. Or maybe the meeting's ineffective because we don't actually have the right people in the room. Mm. You know, again, this could Yeah, maybe go there's on like a, deeper issues or different, different things that are at play. Because yeah. usually when change isn't happening, we don't have the right either players or process or people in the room to have the conversation about it, right? We could be trying our best to have effective meeting, best meeting ever, but it may not be us, yeah. right? It may be the project, it may be the situation, it may be the culture of the org. Maybe our culture is to just meet about the meeting. And if that's our culture, then we're not gonna have great meetings. Mm. And so I think that when we talk about why isn't change happening, again, it's another, it can fold into a number of different aspects. And again, yeah. that takes effort to really dig into what's going on here, that we're not seeing the impact that we expected when we put in all this effort. Because yeah. I hate to see wasted effort, right? right. It should be producing something right. <laughs> when we spend all that this time and energy. Conversation. Um, and as someone receiving feedback, mm. you know, maybe in a different scenario, or if you wanna continue on with that scenario, how do we best receive feedback? Whether it's in the moment or you know it's coming, 
you know, because that can be a very scary situation. So yeah. I'm curious of how to, what we can do if there's a script to stick yeah. to for receiving <laughs> oh, feedback. I wish. I mean, I think yeah. a lot of times when I'm receiving feedback, I may not be aware that this person is going to give it. And so I'm typically taken yeah. off guard. Yeah. Like, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. feedback's happening, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but in the moment that mm. I sense, oh, this, this person is trying to tell me something. Sure. So I try to step back and really give them the space mm. to do it because it doesn't help if I start reacting I like as they're talking. Mm. Now, maybe that's me. I want to be really, make the other person comfortable. But I want to hear the thing that they're saying, whether or not they're delivering it well, whether mm. or not it's coming out with the perfect sentences. But I want to step back and be like, okay, this person took a risk. This person made an effort. Yeah. What are they trying to tell me? <laughs> and can I ask probing questions? Can I dig into it a little bit? Can I ask questions without sounding defensive sure. and really want to sure. explore a little bit more about, mm -hmm. oh, okay, tell me more about that. What else is the impact? How else have you seen that? Again, I enthusiastically want to know more, but I have to first step back to try to figure out what's happening. <laughs> and then I can step in and be like, okay, let's do this together. Help me understand. What do you see? What do others see? Because I want to get all the information mm -hmm. they have. I'm a really curious mm -hmm. person. And mm -hmm. so... If they're sharing something I don't know, I want to know about it. I think when you're receiving, you have to be open to the idea of receiving it. Now, sometimes you can tell that the feedback you're about to receive is not great. Mm. It's not going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not coming from a great person. I want it to stop immediately. Right. Yeah. And in that moment, it's yeah. just, okay, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Right. And on to the next thing. Yeah. Right? We, I can respectfully receive it at the door, but I don't have to take it in. Nice. Right? Yeah. I can I can receive it. Thank like you that. for presenting me with this uh, fruitcake. I shall place it on the counter yes. and, and thank leave. You and leave it. <laughs> right? Yeah, you don't necessarily but, have to apologize right. or or even, you know, say like, yes, that is the truth right. of what happened. You can really just... But I can acknowledge it. I can validate that they shared it, right. but that doesn't mean I have to internalize like take it, it and take it on. you know hold on to it right. forever. I think some people are like, oh, but they shared something and I didn't agree with it and it was wrong. I was like, why are you holding on to it? Yeah. If you don't agree with it, let it go. I like, like let's talk about maybe why you're uncomfortable with it, but like if you don't agree with it, it doesn't resonate, they didn't yeah. articulate it clearly, you can either decide to go back and learn more or just let it be yeah. and see what else you want to gain from it. So I love it. Such good advice. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a little bit about the show and your guests and also the process behind behind the show. How do you, first of all, you could interview yourself, by the, <laughs> by the way, so I don't even think you need guests, but how do you go about choosing and who, like, what, what's your criteria? Yeah. When we have guests on the podcast, we have them in two formats. Uh, one of the formats that we do is kind of a anonymous individual. Obviously, I, I know them a bit, but it's an individual and we're trying to gain their feedback and understand their perspective and how they utilize feedback in their environment. Those are folks that as of right now, they've all been in my network. They're professionals who are exceptional in their field, typically have about 15 to 20 years of experience yeah. and really know their stuff. But I think one of the themes that you see as you hear those individual episodes is there's a lot of commonality, whether we're talking to an electrical engineer or a nonprofit director or an educational consultant, like they wow. all have yeah. similar experiences around feedback. Yeah. The second type of guest that I've been bringing on uh, recently to the podcast is another consultant. So someone like me who gets to be in a lot of different organizations, a lot of different settings, we kind of get to be the third party outside the room, you know, seeing what's happening. Mm -hmm. And we're giving a lot of feedback, whether or not our clients want to receive it, but we're giving it on the individual level, the team level, sometimes enterprise-wide. Mm. And so they get to see feedback from a different lens, and we have to craft it very nicely and also get paid. <laughs> and so it's part of how do you deliver feedback in a respectful way yeah. that's meaningful to the person across industries. So when I'm picking a guest, I'm looking for someone who, again, has that expertise and who I see some kind of value. I'll be honest, Julie, a lot of folks that I invite to the podcast don't feel they're qualified. Mm. They're like, what could I possibly talk about? I don't know what I'm doing. You really want me on your podcast? Like, I'm, And I'm like, no, you're the perfect person because you come with this deep experience and you're yeah. giving so much feedback. Like, what an opportunity for other folks who are in a related or an adjacent field to hear from yeah. you. And that obviously helps a bit. Um, 
But yeah, those are typically the guests that we bring on, and and I've been really grateful that everyone said yes so far. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a really nice experience. Yeah, and it's also branched off into two other yeah. you know uh, business bites, and then also research revealed. Can you tell us a bit more about those? Yeah. So business bites and research revealed are just me talking. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, we're we good do, with that. <laughs> we do yeah, have that. I'm listening. Um, business bites we started mm. first as a way to share really short form. These are like five minutes and under. Me talking about leadership and management oh, wow. topics. Mm. So these are the kinds of things that like I read 200 page books about. You don't need to read the 200 page book. Good. It's me talking about like, okay, what is situational leadership? Or what is a racy model? Oh, or nice. what is like a balance a quick score? quick little, like if, even if you're someone in an organization and you need a quick definition Absolutely. almost. Like, Absolutely. Great. It's a real kind of quick snapshot. And then on the website, we also offer additional resources if folks want to read more. The purpose is uh, kind of couplefold. All of these co topics and different uh, pieces that we cover on the bites are all things I do in my training and the workshops that I deliver. It's just the snippets from that, the tools, the resources, the different awesome. techniques or strategies. Yeah. Why not share that? Um, Research Revealed is where I get to be a little nerdy. Yeah, and I really dive of, in. I know, it's, it's me reading you know, yeah. white papers, research uh, publications, academic research, all in organizational behavior and leadership development. And I don't need you to read the white paper. I'm gonna tell you, okay, did you know? Yeah. And this one is one that's coming up, 80% of projects, change management projects fail. Wow. What a number, right? And if 80% of projects fail, what can you do to make sure you're in the 20%? I like that. And so we try to take the data snap, you know, mm -hmm. the little statistic that you might see on Instagram and actually talk about, again, in a five minute-ish format, how does this apply to you? What can you do with it? How could you use it? And some questions for leaders to think about, oh, what if it's happening in my organization? Right. And how can I get ahead of it if possible? Mm -hmm. So we do a mix of a bunch of different things on the podcast, but um, my production team has been very kind in letting me venture in all these different yes. directions. Um, yes. Because these are the types of questions I get, whether from individuals or from yeah. teams, and I want to be able to share it either in a conversation or in a kind of just me talking format. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a specific topic that you have coming up or that you're trying to kind of get your head around to be able to like present to your listeners? You know, we've been doing a lot of episodes. We're going to be approaching our 100th episode pretty soon. And I've been thinking about some of the themes around yeah, right. feedback. I get a lot right. of people saying, well, what does everyone else think? Yeah. What is everyone else curious about? Yeah. And so we've been talking um, about how could we explore some of those themes? Are there commonalities among different industries? And being able to put together some kind of piece, right? Are we noticing trends in certain areas? And so, right. again, the academic kind of nerdy yeah, side of yeah. me is like, okay, like, I want to be able this. to put yeah. something together and say, okay, across 100 episodes, here's what we heard on this. And here's what you can do about it. And here's what's changing. And if you, again, want the script, here are some things that are sound bites that you can think of or key moments to kind of listen for. So we've been working on that. It's that. not quite ready yet, but um, probably coming up in the spring, I'd say. Awesome. And now I think it's time for our rapid fire. Yeah. Whatever comes to mind, go yeah. for it. It'll just be some fun questions for you. Your most memorable episode, one of them. One of our, I'd say, first five episodes where one of our participants, our, the interviewee, yeah. he swore, <laughs> right? Cuss word came out right and loud. And we actually had, one of the reasons it was a favorite is I had to have a conversation with the production team. Are we gonna allow wow. an expletive? Wow. Right? And part of our conversation is this is not a podcast for my children, although my children do listen, <laughs> but it's not a podcast for them. This is for professionals. And the feedback, he was talking about a feedback moment yeah. where he just kind of needed to let it out, mm -hmm. needed to tell that person like what's going on. Yeah fill in the expletive you think he was actually saying. And we talked about it as far as, I really love that we got to have a dialogue about the dialogue. Mm. Um, and that was a really fun episode. I think he had a great time as we were talking about it, but I think it shows that emotions are possible and they yeah. do happen in feedback conversations. We are not just, you know, cool, calm, and collected right. all the time, right. you know, like looking yeah. professional in a corporate or nonprofit or kind of field environment. Right. Like we're real people yeah. and we get frustrated. Yeah. And so it was a kind of favorite moment um, to, in, in the conversation because he was being really real, real. Mm -hmm. about it. And like, that's what I want people to hear. So yeah. it was kind of fun. And I was lucky it was in one of the first couple of episodes. Awesome. One word to describe your podcast. 
I think it's fun. <laughs> good, good. I think that's important. Yeah, I, I, do. I hope other people find it helpful. Sure, And that helpful. is the feedback yeah. that I get from people about the When feedback. they offer you <laughs> yeah. feedback, yeah. Because sometimes I'll see, uh, you know, colleagues or former connections when I'm out and they're like, oh my God, I love your podcast. And I'm like, tell me more. That's so great. <laughs> but it's so nice to hear that it's helpful for people yeah. or I've had folks say, I forwarded it to my team, you know, if it's one of the specific content uh, pieces or one of those business bites. And so that's really nice to hear and, yeah. And the fact that people that I already know are sharing it yeah. is is really nice. So I, it's probably a mix of the fun and informative. Yeah. So, And it's one of my favorite titles yes. for a show. Uh -huh. I love, love, love it. Yes. Do you have a go-to feedback phrase? I think that um, when you said phrase, I just thought of the emoji that's like, hmm? like <laughs> right? Oh. Like, take it or leave it. Yeah. This is what we've got okay. to talk about. Yeah. And I think that, and I mean, of course, this emoji can be a bunch of other things. But I think um. that people want to hear they want to know, they want to do better. I know this is not one word, mm -hmm. but I think just like say it. And mm -hmm. if you've got great intent and you're a mm -hmm. kind person, and, and maybe those are two big qualifiers, right? But most people are like this. Yeah. Most people I meet are trying to do a good job. They're trying to do their best and really mm -hmm. would appreciate if someone had something helpful to say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's just like, go for just it. Just go for it, just yeah. say it. Um, a book you'd recommend for better feedback skills? Sometimes I'll read a book that really challenges me mm -hmm. in the way I approach, like it's challenging me to think differently about it. I'm not getting the title uh, correct in this moment. It's about um, cultivating uh, self-care and the mm. author, her first name is Nedra. And um, mm. I remember just in the first couple of pages of reading this book, I was like, oh, <laughs> like she was speaking like, to me and yes, it felt like, like an get attack. In my ear. Like, yes. and like, it felt like an attack because it was uncomfortable oh, and I needed to hear okay, it. Yeah. And so it was the kind of book that I kept picking up, mm -hmm. reading a sentence, and then I'd have like, to put it down. Like, I feel targeted. And like, think about yes. it. And then yeah. I'd be like, okay, it may be uncomfortable, but come back to it. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I can, I'll think of the name of it, but uh, her first name, um, I believe, is Nedra, Nedra, and her last name is Tawab. But um, excellent book on, on kind of self-care practices and wow. what gets in the way of us wow. being able to take care of ourselves. When, yeah. And I'm someone who does a lot of taking care of others. And yeah. so it was a really interesting read, but I like a book that pushes me sure. to think a little bit differently yeah. and to challenge some of my assumptions. Yes. And I think that that self-care and just self-respect is actually mm -hmm. what drives, you know, being able to give feedback right. and just standing up for like, like, hey, like, here's how I'm feeling. Yeah. You know, I think that's really the driving, the driving force. What is a fun fact about you that listeners don't know? Mm. Yeah. The fun fact that I usually go to yeah. is I had the opportunity um, between high school and college to be able to do glass blowing for three weeks. Cool. Um, here, well, here in Cleveland in our kind of Asia Town industrial center, um, and it was a really interesting yes. experience. Yes. It was like kind of peak-ish summer, and so it was very hot, hot. but with glass blowing, yeah. the yeah. furnace is hotter, and so you have to wear long sleeves, and you have to protect yourself, and it's a heavy mm. pipe that you're using, and just mm. like a very different kind of activity, mm. and mm. glass is something that always just uh, mm. is interesting, and it's mm. liquid form, it's very heavy, it's very fast, yeah. and then you kind of wait and, and work with it, and, and it's an interesting medium to kind of work with, so that's my kind I of uh, fun fact, and I've been wanting to go back and do yeah. another class, and yeah. Um, refine that skill more. Do you have so. many pieces at your house? Uh, I have many paperweights. Uh, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you got really good at like the, is the, the marble glass yeah. blowing activity. Yes. And then you move into like making a like ornament kind of thing. Yeah, right. and then you maybe can make like a plate or bowl. I have a, a very artistic interpretation of a small plate uh, in my parents' house. So. <laughs> um, That's really yes. cool, and it's not lost on me. I'm sure there's a lot of like. Um, parallel yeah. things going on with your work and yeah. dealing with things that are delicate and yeah. needing to be patient and you yeah. know so it's not lost on me. No, absolutely. Yeah. And like again, I could go on about glass, but like right. as a form, it's very fast and very hot and yeah. very dangerous. Yeah. And like the analogy towards teams, when you're doing yeah. change, yeah. when you're getting into groups, people are delicate and it's fast moving and you can get burned very easily if you're not careful. And like thinking about teams and how they operate and you can't control any of it, right? I can keep spinning the pipe that like the hot molten glass right. is on, but I can't necessarily do everything I want. And even the experts, if you watch ever like Corning has demonstrations of you know experts doing their craft, even then the piece can just fall and then shatter and right. you can't 
put it back together. You have to put it back in the oven and refire, you know, and really do the whole thing all all over again. And so, um, so good. again, endless metaphors. I'm so sure good. art is a medium in general. Yeah. You, could, you could kind of draw a lot of parallels. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know I'm going to be rewinding this. <laughs> so just to get all of the, the different tips and the advice that you oh. shared, Sarah. So thank you so much. Oh. And to our listeners, if you, if you want to do the same where you're rewind, rewinding and playing again all of those tips, you can find us on evergreenpodcast.com and search Sarah's podcast. Can I offer you some feedback? And hopefully you won't shudder as much when you hear that phrase. We'll see you next time. <laughs>